Go ahead and call this part of Rome. For the ARPA Commission on Strategies and Outcome for 927 of 2022. Right. Uh, looking for a motion to adopt the agenda today. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Can I ask a point of order? Sure. So, um, from, and I may be off here. I think it's really important that, to um, acknowledge quorum mm -hmm. that we have that sure. is quorum in public meetings. Yep. Um, so, um, so it's just in the future that we just kind of have that. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah. So do, a, do a roll call vote too, and I have to reach out to, to Mary Ann. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second meeting, she's missed, but. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Noted. All right, looking for a motion to bring the approval of the minutes forward. Hello. Second. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? Morris, they look good? Minutes? I'd like to point out the line that says unspent money will be maintained in a separate fund and not commingled with other county funds. I really meant that. We sat here and talked about it for 15 minutes. Yeah. As far as the minutes, is there a change to that that you want to propose? I'd like to make sure that that's in big, bold letters <laughs> on any other minutes that we have <laughs> in the future. Like the lead bold that. We can bold them. That's the these results. I think we're just talking about the minutes that yep. are. July right. is eight now. Yep. Yeah. The issue of the July minutes. So in favor of approving them. Say aye. 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 All right. Moving on to uh, public comments. I'd like to give the opportunity for anybody in the room first if they have public comments they'd like to to make. Make yourself be known. Yeah. I think it might be a good idea to maybe go around and introduce everybody because we've got new people here. As you can see, I have a name tag. The rest of you didn't bring your own name tags. <laughs> yeah, but we'll share that. One. <clears throat> right. yeah. Share that. <laughs> no, I think that's good. Uh, we'll, we'll do that right after public comments. Every time. That's okay with you. Any public comments? Anybody on Zoom joining us today? Does anyone on Zoom have a public comment? I have someone in chat. Um, this is Deb Martin in Oshkosh. I have a public comment. All right. Hold on. Deb, can you hold on one second? We got to see if we can't get the speaker to work so we can all hear. I, have to, uh, I, think, I think the volume control is on the device in the middle. I have to uh, make a one. Excuse me, Sean. Please talk to see if it's louder. Hi, this is Deb Martin. I live in Oshkosh. Yeah, I don't have the speaker set right, so hang on just a moment. Okay. I'm not a very good technician. Um, he's a 17 year old. Yeah. 12 year old would work too. Yeah. Uh, try again now. I changed the speaker. Hopefully, now I have it on the all. Hi, this is Deb Martin in Oshkosh. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for very much for um, allowing these meetings to be on Zoom. Um, I have to head to a granddaughter's cross country meet in a minute, so I appreciate that I can, can speak. Thank you for considering the ARPA funds. I urge you to agree to hear from public input as to where some of those funds could be put best use in our county. And uh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Other public comments? Anyone else on Zoom? Hi, Craig. I have comments to make regarding the timeliness of our minutes and the timeliness of the packet was lousy this time around. At five o'clock last night is when I got my packet. And some of us didn't get it until we got here. As far as the minutes, they weren't included. We had to re 
re-enter the, the agenda and amend the agenda so we can adopt the forget the minutes. Okay. So I appreciate it very much. We take a little time and go over that in a timely fashion so we get everything on time early enough so we can look it over. All right. Yes, I, I realized that was very late and I apologize to the commission for that. It was primarily due to all the matters we've had to do, primarily the, the budget process. The budget's going out to the printer today, so the timing has been very bad. That's a new process for me. Uh, we're still understaffed and uh, that's my explanation, not an excuse, but I realized that wasn't uh, the level of performance you expect to see. I did think the minutes were included in the packet, so that must no, have been an were. oversight. I, I believe you, I just- they I don't think there's like any reason to respond to public comments. So no. Should be a one-way street. Okay. Thank you very much. Sir. Anybody else uh, have anything to say? No, over there. <laughs> All right, I'd uh, like to add a, uh, a point here to do introductions. Anybody have an in, uh, issue with that? No? Repeat that, please. <laughs> We're going to do introductions around the sure. room. Nobody has an issue with that? All right, well, I'm going to start. Uh, John Damo, County Executive. I'm the co chair of this commission. Um, and I'll Tom, Tom Egan, County Chair Board, and co commissioner. The co -commissioner. Uh, good evening, Chuck Corey. I represent District 30, one of your county board, and I am vice chair of the county board. I'm Tom Borchard. I represent District 3, northern part of Menasha, and I've um, been on since 2018. I'm Tim Galloway from, uh, well, I live in the town of Denman, very happy to. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but uh, uh, work in Nina uh, for the family dairy business. Tom, I want to stick to you. Stick to no, you. I remember. Tom Belter, retired banker. Right. Mike Collard, acting finance director and director of administration for the company. Uh, Peschel, District 19, uh, order uh, supervisor. My name is Morris Cox. I'm with uh, Fox Crossing as a supervisor, 27, and I'm also the chair of uh, the BNF uh, for personnel and, uh, and finance committee. All right, very well. We're going to uh, Item four, consider a resolution authorizing Winnebago County to accept the second tranche of state and local fiscal recovery funds established by the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, in the amount of $16,695,459 with expenditures to be appropriated at a future time. I so move to accept. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion on this? So this is. This is what we received in July. That's what they said. This is the second half. Okay. Got it. Yep. All right. It works. Okay. So normally, because we didn't we didn't have this committee earlier, we wouldn't have we would have never this typically would have come to it. But because this committee exists, the crime is here. Yep. Okay. I assume that's the pending resolution as part of it. Yep. Yeah, we did have a resolution. Last, I think it was October, I mentioned that in the, in the whereas clause to accept, formally accept the first half, mm -hmm. just to satisfy the, uh, the requirements of Chapter 6590 of the statute. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both say nay. Right. There he is. Five, consider, res <coughs> excuse me, consider resolution. Recognizing the $33,390,918 in ARPA state and local fiscal recovery funds as a replacement of lost revenue for the calendar years of 2020, 2021, and 2022, and identifying expenditures incurred for general government services and general fund departments, the highway department, and Part D healthcare center between March 3rd, 2021, and September 30th, 2022. As the use of those funds. And the motion to bring this to the table. So moved. Second. Second. 
All right. Uh, Who would like to start discussion with this? I don't. Right. I don't know um, how you're going to break that up when you say highway and park view health care center, and then you go ahead and use just those funds. I don't know why this all of them put into a separate fund where we know exactly where it goes to, because this commission was to go ahead and we were to decide where it was going, but then from there. Then it goes to the board. So for us to go ahead and say we wanted a highway M or something like that for a highway department, it won't be up to us anyway. It's, it's got to go back to the whole board. So I, I just I don't think that we should be put, breaking it down this much and naming which department it's going to go to. I'm going to take a, a crack at explaining that a little bit, and I'm going to have uh, Director Collard uh, supervise my thought here to check in. So pretty much the idea is if we accept this as lost revenue through these streams, it will go in and push that money out. That money will then become separated into what we will consider the ARPA funds. So this money that we're going to do, it's, it's, it is a maneuver, uh, is going to free us up from a lot of the reporting long-term for the ARPA and a lot of the risk long-term of any kind of auditing in the future if they come back on determining projects that we do may have may have not hit the spirit of ARPA. So if I can believe I'm trying to explain this as right as best I can, we're using these funds as the lost revenue to cut the ties of the, the reporting end of that ARPA money so that we can have longer term to look at uh, these ARPA funds, longer term to spend them if we decide to move forward with something with land conservation uh, that we should we should look over 15 years out to actually make a difference, we're going to take a lot of those time frames down. Uh, Mike, did I hit the basics and what did I miss? Yes, very well. I can elaborate a little bit and add uh, a couple points to it. This is, yeah, this is, uh, these are the hoops we want to jump through in order to free up the money for us to then use independent of treasury regulations and reporting responsibilities as well as time limits. So one of the allowable uses under ARPA is to use the money to replace lost revenue. The theory being that during the pandemic, there's less activity, less revenue generated by certain things, maybe less tax revenue. And part of the allowable uses of these funds is to replace that revenue. And that sounds fairly limited if you just hear that much of it. But then Treasury Department did issue regulations uh, providing a formula. They changed that formula a couple of times. By the time they were done, it was a very generous formula, in my opinion. But it's a formula by which we can calculate our lost revenue. And it creates a irrebuttable presumption, really, that we have lost revenue in a certain amount. So when I apply that revenue, that formula to our situation in Winnebago County, I was able to determine quite fairly using their formula that by June of 2022, we had established lost revenue according to that formula over $33.5 million. In fact, I've reported that to the Treasury Department and they're fine with that. At least they haven't objected. Uh, there's no formal acceptance process. Uh, so uh, we are entitled by that to treat the full $33.4 million of ARPA funds as lost replacement of lost revenue. Uh, what happens when you replace lost revenue? How does that show up on the books? Well, it means you can then use that money for any general government expense. There are some restrictions on that. You can't use it for contributions to a pension fund. You can't use it just to put in the bank to replace your lost revenue. We don't tax people just to put money in the bank. It has to be designated as having been used or about to be used for some general government service purpose. Uh, so within those restrictions, we can designate it as basically replacing other money we use to pay for general government services. Now we can't use it to replace money we got from outside the county because that would create issues with going outside the county. So I went through, went through the finances and, and looked at what some of our expenses were and the easiest ones to identify, I believe, are wages in, in certain departments. I didn't want to identify wages in the highway department, even though I put that on the agenda. After further thought, I realized that was probably a mistake because highway department gets revenue from 
towns and from the state for state and town highway projects it would complicate matters. We could still we could still do that. But in terms of the sheriff's office, that's a large uh, expense for for wages in the sheriff's department. It's mainly a wage expense, and most of those wages are not compensated through any means other than tax levy and our own internal uh, fund balances. Uh, the same is true generally for Parkview. There's some revenue produced, but that's not the kind of revenue we have to worry about. Uh, but there's a lot of wages there. There's some other departments such as facilities, information system, there are parks projects, emergency, any public safety. Those are all departments where it would be a very legitimate use under ARPA to allocate those funds and fairly easy to identify specific amounts. So if the board approves this, it will, it will do two things. It will, first of all, recognize all 33 million as replacement of lost revenue. Then it will say, it's kind of a fiction, but one allowable under the under the regulations that we've identified the money we've already spent for sheriff's deputies and nurses and custodians and maintenance people and whatever else we need in those departments to add up to the 33 million. And I've done some preliminary numbers. They will add up to the 33 million. Um, it has to be expenses incurred after March 3rd, 2021. <laughs> So it's a year and a half, uh, a little over a year and a half now by the time we're done. Uh, we spend money uh, at, at, at the rate of 10 million a month generally, but just identifying those areas will give me enough to say that we've identified expenses that we theoretically have used that revenue for, that we're now replacing with, with the ARPA revenue, the lost revenue replacement funds. So it's really just swap out of money we've already spent. What that will do is it, of course, will then produce high balance numbers on paper in the general fund and in the parking fund. So there will be a third step to this, and then we'll be done as far as the, <laughs> the third step will be, will again on paper transfer that money back out of the general fund and the park view fund to a special revenue fund, which we set up for purposes of holding this 33 million and nothing else. So we'll be still treated completely separately. Yeah. Uh, but that will need another county board resolution. And the auditor's advice was that that be done later. In fact, they're going to come in and do the first run at our single audit, which is the audit we do to make sure that we're compliant with various federal and state grants uh, throughout the year. And so they can run through that and make sure there are no problems. And then probably by November, we can move it back into a special revenue fund. Right now, it's separate but part of the general fund. We'll still keep the money separate. We'll still keep it in separate money market fund. Uh, but just on paper, it will be delegated or identified as having been used uh, already, already uh, having been spent by various county departments. It won't affect those departments at all in their terms of their actual operations or what they actually spend. We're just swapping dollars for other dollars. In your, in your opinion, in the opinion of your colleagues and the auditors, this was the most surefire way to protect the interest and liability of one of the county and the taxpayers, correct? This is the way to get the full amount uh, cleared quite properly through all the treasury regulations and ending up in a separate fund completely at the direction of the county board with, without any further restrictions. So we could, the board could use it for any purpose at that time over any timetable the board wants to, of course, based on the consensus of the commission last meeting we had, obviously there's an intent to use it for purposes related to our fund. Mm -hmm. So according to the auditor, we should call that new fund where it's gonna eventually end up the ARPA fund. That would confuse things. So I think we should call it the spirit fund because uh, the committee has uh, indicated an intent to uh, use the money in the spirit of ARPA. Uh, so without actually using the ARPA title, uh, it'll still be identifiable by us. We'll know uh, how we've used that term as as the 33 million. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your explanation. However, uh, in my mind, it does require a little bit more of an explanation. You mentioned these funds are in a money market fund. Yeah. And how much have we accrued in return on that investment since it's been invested in addition mm -hmm. to these funds? Good point. Um, I don't have that answer. Obviously, I can get it. I don't have it to hand. Um, 
what's the intention of that line? It's county money. It really doesn't have any strings, so we could just move that back to the general fund. But I hadn't really thought about where we're going to move it. At what rate is it going? Oh, we're up. Uh, we changed the rate several times. It was at eight tenths of a percent, but it's now. I want to say one point six percent. So I, I, I appreciate the return will be substantial. It's um, it's if, increase the money now. If if you could ask uh, Director Keller your your comments after. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's fine. Questions are are for commission members or or county board members. Sure, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you for understanding. Uh, do you have an intention for that? Those funds as funny exec at this point in time. I do not, um, and I have no issues with that going into to this fund as well. Okay, so it'll be up to this commission to make that decision. Yeah, I'm absolutely fine with that. Then, yep. in theory, we could be talking maybe closer to 35 million. Uh, although I would just in general, yes, off top of my head. Although I would suggest that that shouldn't be reflected in this resolution. No, no, I, I'm then not suggesting we will need another resolution to move back into a special revenue fund, and at that time we can elect whether or not to move all the interest with it, the accrued interest. Mm -hmm. I addressed the question for the benefit of the commission. That's a good question. Thank you. Help the banker over there. I know your gears are spinning. Do you have any questions? I don't like the um, the justification of the action. I mean, the intent of the money was to be spent to repair COVID impact. Um, and the fact that you know, I come from a regulated environment, which is extremely regulated. So to do something to, you actually stated to avoid regulations and timelines. Well, to me, that's, that's structuring um, a receipt of funds, which in, in my role was a was a violation of, of our of our trust. So um, I don't want to support this because I just don't like the motivation of doing something to avoid the regulations that came with the money. I appreciate that and I'll explain a little bit of how we came to that conclusion. Um, a lot of the meetings that I've gone to for emergency management and training um, and FEMA dollars is pretty much what we kind of wanted to look at as the closest thing out there to ARPA dollars. So emergency funds from the federal government. The history of the federal government is to go out the funds needed during an emergency and then come back six, seven years later and audit you um, and hit you up for everything that they now determined is not uh, an allocable expense. Taxpayers then are forced to pay whatever the federal government decides was not allocated at the time correctly. Um, then and there. There have been uh, municipalities and counties in the past that have been hit with an emergency $3 million bill um, to be funded back. And that comes out of the coffers and the taxpayers. Um, that's my concern is in the future, somebody else could, we can have a different administration with a different, uh, I guess, interpretation of the rules. Um, and we would be on the hook as taxpayers to cover any of those monies going forward. That's why it took so long for us to get the grant agreements done with the David A. Warming Shelter and everybody else, because we wanted to make sure that in the future, if the state decided this is not appropriated correctly, the David A. Warming Shelter wasn't going to be able to afford the three and a half million dollars, and that would have been settled on the county taxpayers. So I, when I got together with Mike and we got together with the auditors, what is the best way to protect us from what happens, what we see in FEMA dollars and what our concerns were uh, with the ARPA dollars. And those concerns are shared across the nation. At NACO, there are plenty of county administrators way smarter than me uh, that are concerned about the same thing. Um, when they change their mind, when they have their regulations, when they figure it out at the back end, what's going to happen um, when the tide changes. Um, so I guess that's that's justification, but I do completely understand why it makes you uneasy. Well, similarly, we have a fiduciary responsibility when we accept the funds, say and promise that we're following every rule that comes along with that money. So you're, you're kind of saying we don't follow the rules that, that come with this money. And I, I just don't think that's the right spirit of this. I appreciate that. Just one other point relevant, I think, is that just uh, yesterday or late last week, we got a somewhat disturbing email from the Treasury Department, and it basically said, we don't have enough funds to properly administer this grant. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm summarizing. 
uh, and, and putting that more pointedly than the email did. But it basically was to give warning to participants that they wouldn't be able to provide the same level of helpfulness and responsiveness to, to concerns and administrative difficulties, which many people have had with their website. So just maybe a little bit more afraid of their reporting requirements. And this would, in my mind, evade the reporting requirements. It would, uh, it would shorten them. In other words, we'd be done by the end of the year in terms of our reporting. Wouldn't have to do that further. Placing up to less risk for the problems they had. It's probably just the power move to get more money from Congress, but raised a little bit of a red flag. Which is the ask, and NACO's looking for support to get behind a resolution. Uh, they want to they wanna ask for another bill to fund the administration of the ARPA dollars, um, is what they're looking at right now. Um, but, Mike, a question to you Is there a way for us to attach the same kind of rules to the Spirit Fund if we? Can you guys please unmute? We can see your mouths moving, but no words are coming. This is joke. No, how's that now? <laughs> there we go. Thank you. You can hear? I'm sorry. I was trying to un I was trying to mute people on Zoom because we were getting some interference. Could, could you please let us know uh, what the last conversation was? Where, where, where <laughs> um. Last we heard was disagreement for trying to um, pass these funds without regulation. And then the consideration was maybe we can still put the same rules on them, which I don't. Thank you. I, I think after that, uh, it was very clear uh, that Tom's not in support of this, and, that, and that, that's fine. Um, and then the other question was, are the counties associations, I believe, uh, what, are, what are they saying? And, and they're talking. Um, I think that's that's why we we brought Jay Curtis and Andy Phillips in to really help us with the grant agreements with the ten point three five million dollar grant that we have um, to make sure that we're protecting everybody who's a sub grant agreement as well as the county taxpayers. Um, there's counties out there that um, we don't believe they're they're going to take the uh, dollars because they're concerned of the federal government coming back later and demanding uh, portions back. Hmm. It was the same thing with NACO. Uh, if I might to maybe clarify the and this question is for Mike, you originally identified certain specific federal criteria to use these funds. And the one we're choosing is an option of many. Is that correct? It's an option of several, several. which is as okay, so, lost revenue. But it is one of the defined options that the federal government is allowing. It is. I think that would answer the question. But certainly, we have the same concern. We wouldn't want to do anything else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got a, something here that maybe we should go back and look at in our minutes there. If I remember right, what we were supposed to talk about at this meeting is you guys were supposed to come with something that you want from the county first. Like, mm -hmm. what did you want in buildings or this and that? That was the first thing we we're supposed to talk about, not about this today. Mm -hmm. We weren't even supposed to talk about it. Am I, am I wrong? That's to me, that was the first thing we we're going to talk about, and then we we're going to decide on where we're going to go from there. And then that's what we we're sure. supposed to do. Well, we have that at seven, but but Mike, we uh, Director Collard, we, we had told the federal government that lost revenue was the, the plan we were looking at. All right, we, we claimed it as lost revenue, but uh, and that we did discuss that at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know that this is inconsistent with any plan about looking at county projects first. It, it would be a step before that. Maybe I didn't read the minutes right. If I didn't, if I did remember right, you know I'm wrong then, because that was the thing that you were supposed to do. 
you guys would both come back with what the county had to have first, and then from there, we're going to decide what we're going to do with it from there. Well, and, and lost revenue is a county use. I mean, you could look at it that way. It's the county's using all the money to replace revenue loss, but then we can reallocate it or whatever portion we choose to other outside projects. So, you know, the consideration of other county uses is, is on the agenda. It's just the next item. Okay. So I, I want to validate your, your comment there. Um, but not validate, you probably won't like it. My memory is that. Um, is that was to was to prepare a resolution for this meeting to to talk about the lost revenue to use it for lost revenue and to provide us feedback from departments of what their needs were. They just happened to meet that same amount already, and that's expected. Um, and so I, that that's my memory of what of what we asked them to do. Um, there's something. Uh, you know, we also asked them to come up with like a criteria of, of how we would do things and stuff like that. But that that's not here today. That's maybe part of our discussion. Um, but then I want to come back to Tom's comments because I want to fully understand where where you're coming from. Um, because what I kind of hear is, is that it kind of relates to being the most most truthful and transparent with how those funds have been used. Mm -hmm. And by doing it like this way, it suggests. That suggests that that we're not being transparent about how those funds were typically were originally used, or just explain that a little bit more for me. You could interpret this on the surface as taking all the money to claw back into the last three years of the county budget to pay for deferred maintenance and some certain overtimes or whatever salaries you want to say we're allocated for, and you know, we don't we don't know what. Future administrations will do with this segregated spirit fund. Um, they could just stop it and put it back into the budget and throw it into, you know, whatever whatever purpose future boards might want to do. Um, but I'm more I'm just disappointed that we think we have to get around the rules that came with the money. Um, this 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 is an acceptable use, but it's it's not meant to repair budgets um, over the last two years. It's just my it's just my opinion how the money should be used. You know, for instance, read other counties or municipalities are spending 75% on on projects yeah. or capital improvements, a little bit of nonprofit, a little bit of pet projects, but but it's not meant to, to be a, a budget filler. Okay. I so it's our it's our initial action of how we're getting how we're using those dollars and then being able to turn around and use it. The reason to do this seems seems it seem to be um, correct in my opinion. Okay. 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 Although, although allowed. Sure. It's not. It's not the spirit of the funding. Yeah, I say something. So, <clears throat> to you, I understand where you're coming from, and you are absolutely right. We should not be taking extra steps to get around and make this. into a segregated fund and pull from that segregated fund each time we have a, a particular project, fire department project or the ice arena project or whatever, pull it from that and have the justification behind it exactly the way it's been written up. Would you then agree that it was being used properly? Well, it's not a irrevocable trust. It is a segregated fund. I would assume any future county board could could change the rules of those funds with a two-thirds vote and push it back into the budget 
five years from now. Correct? It would be, a, in, in but, my opinion, it would have to be a segregated fund and it would be pulled out as it was being used. That would have to die at the end of the fund's life, which is 2024, I think. So you would have a period of time which you could use it, a period of time where the projects would have to be totally justified. And then the money removed yours as per the instructions. Tom, Tom is correct. We cannot tie the hands of the future board. If the future That's board wanted to change rules and do whatever they wanted with it, they would have the ability. Um, the reason staff came to this conclusion is we understand you can't spend money for free. Um, and the regulations and the staffing it's going to take to actually facilitate these funds the way it is intended to be is going to be a monumental task. It's going to be a monumental task of reporting. It's going to be a monumental task of auditing. It's going to be a monumental task of making sure that everything hits. My intention was just to bring you the, the, the cleanest way forward for us to go so we can still spend this money in the spirit of ARPA. Um, with the least amount of administrative costs going forward, but the most amount of protection for Winnebago County and the taxpayers for any liability that may be, you may be on the, the hook. To Tom's point, we could absolutely just claim this as lost revenue and put it to general fund and it'd be completely legal and walk away from it. That's, that's irresponsible. It's irresponsible to do for, for the people in our communities. Um, and that is the point of this bringing up here. So we can look at the resolution. And we had this very discussion, so Tom can disagree with me uh, cordially, and I appreciate that, that bringing those concerns up. Um, and that's all I'm looking to do with this, this number. Um, Tom, do you have anything to add to the discussion? At all? Not right now. Okay, not right now. All right. Tim? Any further discussion on this? I guess I'm not I'm not ready to take a vote on it. So yeah, I, I need more discussion. So and that's a good point. We can table this in the next yeah. meeting if, if somebody would like to make that motion. I don't see any action on here anyways. This is considered. No, well, that's true. Consider means say action on it. Consider is an action order. Yeah. Yeah. Consider is an action order. Yeah. We don't do it any other way, so it must be be your wording. Like what the corporation calls the courts. Well, I mean, we just the same same language was used for the resolution the commission mm -hmm. already approved sending to the board. So that was that was the intent. Mm -hmm. Um if for me, I guess where I'm where I'm kind of stuck now is you know, if we don't do it for lost revenue, can we just put it into an account? That we then dictate, you know, is this is that what Morris was talking about? A separate. separate account. So okay, um, and then with that, there would be some some clear, maybe some laborious directions that go along with that. And and I think what I, what I think I hear you saying is that there's still laborious directions by doing by going the path of lost revenue, but there's less of it, and it saves taxpayers money. By doing by going that way, and less risk, and less risk. Um, greater justification, quicker justification. Well, and I, ideally, does it give us quicker? And not that this should be a deciding factor. Does it give us quicker, quicker access to those funds if we do it that way as well? It yes, we would have quick access to the funds if we do it this way. Um, okay. and, and I guess another layer of this, uh, where where Tom was correct that a future board could. Change change the scope of this um, in any ways. So could the future uh, administration sure. in DC or or Madison, and, and I think that's the hard part. Nobody knows the future. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Um, if you ask me, the fire is still not put out. I mean, the eggs are three dollars a dozen right now. We don't know what the challenges are coming forward. Um, so there's there's a lot to consider. This is not a small task, but that is why I appointed. Who I appointed on this committee, and that's that's why we ran for election to make choices like this. Let me just add something. You know, we don't have to make 
and decisions immediately about this. We can set it aside. And we can also think towards putting it into a separate fund and doing it the individual way, the individual project way. And by doing that, I think you, what scares me most is the opportunity for an auditor to come back in after the fact. And we haven't done it quite the way they like it. They can then have us pay back a large amount of that immediately, which would cause more harm than to be doing it as a project for project type of situation. And you get to identify those projects properly that have been throwing them out into one area and then keep your fingers crossed. You don't get an eye. You get everything all squared away and you can then go back in there and use it the way we want to. I'm, I'm afraid that's not going Mike, can I get a clarification? We, we thought that this was probably the best way to safeguard for the Well, yes, I think this is very much a safer way to do it for that very reason. Right. And I've had extensive discussions with our auditors about it, but part of the reasoning is if, if we just let this sit where it is as you know, replacement of lost revenue, but not yet used, we still have to eventually report on how it's going to be used. So we won't trigger any audit response from the Treasury Department or anyone else until we designate how it's being used. This is actually a way to designate how it's all being used next month. Then the auditor will come back, do their preliminary audit of, of how we're dealing with the, with the grant funds. And by November, we should have at least a tentative response that that looks good, that this will satisfy the audit test. And they're the auditors who also audit our use of grant funds. I don't really expect a lot of initiative from the Treasury Department to do it. That's where it'll come from. So by doing this, we'll trigger that audit, say we're using it all for this purpose, paying things that we've already paid for, essentially. That'll trigger the audit. We'll get the green light before we've actually spent the money. To be honest, it'll still be there in our accounts, just in a different account. So we'll have that decision, and then we can decide to move it back to a special revenue fund where it will no longer be subject to any further auditing. So that's but that's part of the reasoning behind doing it this way. The alternative is let it sit there. Then as we, as the commission may elect to, to use the money, it can then submit projects directly to the board to spend out of that account as general government <laughs> services. Um, and we could report that. I have to report quarterly how we're dealing with these funds. I have to do a report next month. And you know, if I report no projects, that's fine. But if I report a project, it'll be looked at project by project as we go along. Uh, but this was an idea that, that I had just to go through that audit process before we really were committing the money to anyone outside the company. I have a question for you. Uh, in the banking business, did the federal government ever tell you what to do and then three months later change your mind? Oh, sure. I mean, we've had 35 years in banking and with FDIC mm -hmm. auditors, internal auditors, uh, in a loan policy like this, we had, you know, it was just a job that followed the rules. So I'm used to embracing them and following the rules and getting criticized and reacting to it and resolving a rule. A rule transgression. But. So that being said, it, it comes to a point, this committee, we got to get some trust in what we're doing and how we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And if the intent is that we're covered and we're saving manpower, he doesn't have enough time to do the stuff he's supposed to do, much less more stuff and, and get her going. And we're still in a committee yet. We haven't there be disbanded or anything. <coughs> then we bring in the the guarantee that it won't happen. And then will it happen? Maybe it will. And we'll have to take it at that time. But with everybody knowing what the attempt is, I think that maybe, you know, we can go ahead and, and take this on and just cover our bases, which he has done for us. It's up to us. 
to do the maps. I'm well, done talking. Do I have to tell you I'm done? No, no you're good. <laughs> Very well taken. Thank you for your comments. Really appreciate it. Um, well, that being said, we have a motion on the table. Um, I have not heard a motion to try to table this. Um, can, can I just make some more comments? You, yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, I, what I, I and I think it's important that that if we want to talk about where we're stuck, that it's important that we talk about where we're stuck. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm I'm stuck in a couple of different areas. One is that I, I think we've been we've been sitting on this money for a long, not for a long time, but for a considerable amount of time. Um, and we haven't had to use it. We probably were you waiting for direction on on you know from the federal government or the Treasury Department on, on how to use it and how we can't use it. Um, all that time we've seen other governments distributing funds and utilizing them and um, trying to complete projects, but but we didn't. Um, I'm, I'm concerned by just using the lost revenue umbrella that it that it suggests a level of lack of transparency of, of what that is. You know, I I, I really am. Um, but at the same time, I really just want this money to be used either in the county or for our partners throughout the county and everything and and realizing that you know this gets us to that maybe quicker. I mean, on this agenda, we're talking about considering dollars from there at all, from, from that already. Um, but but that's that's kind of where I'm at. I, I'm now stuck about whether this is the most transparent path to doing it or whether just keeping the dollars and distributing them as needed is more transparent. Um, so that's and I and I don't know whether I should make that motion to table because of that. Well, let's um, continue a conversation um, if you want okay. um, to, to address your concerns. We don't have the ability in this committee or this commission to make this decision. We are simply recommending to the full board what the decision is. We will not have the ability as this commission to appropriate any of these funds, only to make recommendations to the entire board. Um, this will be the committee based on these $33 million or so whatever they end up being of how we're going to spend that. That process will be very transparent. That process will be able to, any project that we rep, that we recommend going forward will have to go to the public board in a very public process. Um, this is why me and Mike talked about a spirit fund to make sure that we are still spending this in the spirit of our football, protecting everybody, getting us access to it. Um, and, and the other thing that, that I would urge you uh, to reach out to other county governments, um, the ones that have spent some of their upper dollars have been thousands, um, not millions. Um, there are a lot of ones that are taking their time in because they are concerned, because the federal regulations have changed so much, because we just got an email last week saying, hey, we don't have enough money to facilitate the administration of these funds. We have to go back to Congress to ask for more money so that we can actually facilitate the money that we, uh, we already sent out. Um, so there is a lot of chaos out there, sure. um, and which is why I agreed to this and, and why administration <laughs> tried to figure out the best way to protect the interest of Winnebago County, that we could still spend the monies uh, in the safest way possible and, and help our citizens. And have a no end, a no end to the use of ARPA funds because we have identified it already. And so therefore the 2024, end period goes away, but you still leave yourself for the shell game that you're moving them around and not being fully transparent in what you're dealing with. And you start paying your labor or showing that you're going to pay, going to pay the labor with X number of dollars, 
and make that a justification for taking the whole freaking bunch and putting it into the general fund. And I can't live with that. It can't go in the general fund. It can't be put directly in. It's got to be segregated. And that's Director Collard, that, that is the point, right? The point yes. is we are using this money as loss revenue. And the loss mm -hmm. revenue that we are replacing is going into a separate portion of the, the designated fund, correct? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's in a separately designated part of the general fund currently. Uh, this is a... I think you mean that Is that if that's based off our audit currently? It's not going to show that. You named that the unrestricted general fund. Is that correct? The unrestricted general, the, the ARPA money now is in a restricted portion, not unrestricted of the general fund. What I'm saying is, I don't believe there's an unrestricted anything in our general fund. We've got five designations in that general fund. My, not that's not what we're talking about here. Okay. All right. My understanding was that we weren't going to, that we were going to put it into a separate fund. Oh, we were thinking about putting it into a separate fund, not shifting it around. Can you unmute the committee again, please? It's not showing the committee muted. Uh, Supervisor Cox says, a little far from the microphone. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Thank now? you. Thank you. Okay. Perhaps it's time to call the board. Yep, correct. I just want to make a comment about transparency. Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to federal government funds and them giving you a formula that you're trying to identify, if, if you've done everything you can to follow their formula, that's as good as we can get. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they put a pot of money in there. They've spread a lot of money around this whole country to try and mitigate the effects of COVID. And I don't have a problem using their formulas and their guidance to use that money for the best use of the time. All right, we're gonna try this by uh, yeah, go on. Just, just because of my comments weren't absolutely clear. Um, I, and I think I will um, probably uh, be voting in support of doing this for the end game, as uh, it allows us to uh, add that level of transparency um, and it allows us to be able to engage, still kind of talking about where are our needs and assignments, and it still allows us to have that conversation about what are our needs within our partners within our county, whether there are other municipalities or towns or nonprofit entities, wherever that might take us. So, thank you. Okay. With that, we're going to try this voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Aye. All right. Yes. Sorry, were there two nays? Two, two nays. nays. Two nays. Mm -hmm. Seven two. Yep. All right, moving on to six. Consider a resolution transferring one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars from the undesignated general fund balance to the county executive's office for contracting services to provide strategic planning and development of the priority-based budgeting system. I'll move approval. All right. Uh, second. Second. All right. Uh, just to introduce this a little bit. Um, Mr. Chairman, I just want to indicate I'm passing out an actual sure. draft of the resolution, which again, um, fortunately, was not ready in time to pass. Thank you. Commissioner, consider today. All right. Uh, and to introduce this a little bit, um, I know I've been talking a lot about uh, strategic outcomes and, and having, having a strategic plan in the county. Um, I think it is paramount for us going forward, something we really need to get started. Um, when I was tasked with going to the county and figuring out uh, what the ask are, the ask were very much overwhelming. Um, the only thing on, on the list that, that I have prepared for you are 
are mostly, very much mostly capital projects, one-time uh, use. Uh, there are other requests that will be coming in from the health department and human services that actually deal with uh, program development people, not to mention uh, community uh, outreach out there and, and a lot of our nonprofits that are waiting for their opportunity to come and ask, speak to this board. Um, it is would be very easy for us to spend the $33.5 million without even getting outside of our walls <laughs> um, with deferred maintenance other things, which we will get to with item seven. So <clears throat> if there was one ask that I was going to put above and beyond any other ask within our county, um, it was this, uh, a strategic plan um, that we we need to get we need to get moving on it. We need a way to, to measure our outcomes and we need a way to have a roadmap as an organization of what our priorities are. Um, so I'd like to open it up for discussion. Has there been an RFP on this? Has not yet. Okay. So 175 was a number, but we don't know if it's a good term number. Correct. 175. Um, and to clarify a little bit, we currently do not have a strategic plan to come. So it, it will be impossible for us to do a deep dive to a very specific strategic plan. I think the first go is usually more of a high level um, approach to pretty much let us know what our roles and responsibilities and, and what our plan is and what our mission is going forward. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First observation is my assumption was that this might come forward specific to the 33.3 million we're addressing. However, as I read this, it's much broader. In fact, it would cover strategic planning, budgeting for the entire conference. I also assume that might address county uh, committee issues as part of that planning process. Uh, that's a major concern on my part. Uh, Could you clarify that concern? Please? Well, and, I, and let me finish the second part. If I were to approve this, I somewhat agree that we've sat on this money too long. It needs to be decided and appropriated. If we are. Excuse me, if we hire a person to do that, are we going to tie it up for another year? I've been involved in all kinds of plans in my career. And they normally take 12 to 18 months. I mean, I'd like to see some conclusions here, but at least next summer. Mm -hmm. And I don't think what you're proposing would address it. So on its face, I, I have uh, major concerns. I think it needs to be worded better. It needs to be focused better. It needs to be more definitive. Sure. Hey, we're too wrong. Sure. Um, so uh, just to kind of jog everyone's memory, at our, at our last meeting, I, I kind of spent a lot of time talking about strategic planning. Um, and it was it was kind of at my, at my request that we pull funds from this to create a strategic plan for the county as a whole. My comments were not in the kind of would create the intent that we create a strategic plan about the distribution and the execution of this $33 million. Um, my suggestion is based off of looking at about 30 different county websites across the country that are of our side and looking at how robust they are and what's driving that. And many times what's driving that is, a, is, a, is an extremely engaged strategic plan um, and I would make the argument that every, probably every county, not every county, but every major township, municipality, a village within Winnebago County has a strategic plan that's guiding how they proceed through their through their operations and the needs of their community. And so, so that's that's what the intention of this request was was to create a plan of how the county board, the county executive, and the community can work together moving forward the direction of the county. So that's just my thoughts. I might respond. Uh, I think you're a little mistaken on uh, municipalities and their plans. 
the re state law, Chapter 66, requires a uh, municipality to have it, but it, it deals primarily with zoning issues uh, and the planning of the geographical zoning districts. Nothing to do with budgets, none of that stuff. So you, yeah. you are quite incorrect. And, and I think what you're talking about uh, and I'm, I don't want to get into that. I think you're plan. talking about a consolidated plan or a smart plan. And yes, they are by state statute supposed to do that. I'm thinking more of these internal strategic plans that are much different than that. I'm not aware of any town that has that. Okay. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, cities and villages, but. Well, I, I can tell you. Of the town. I can tell you the city I of Oshawa. So um, I know the city of Nina has one. So city, um, yes. school, dist yes. school districts, these are all entities within Winnebago County that, that utilize these to provide direction, not only from internally, but externally. Um, and it's something that we're, it's something that we're, we're missing greatly. John is trying to do this without the county board being on board doing it. When you look at John's, conversations that he sends out to us on a weekly basis about how he's engaging his staff. Those are strategic planning discussions that are taking place. And, and if we're not on the same page with that as a county board representative, we're missing out. We're not, we're not, we're not on the same plane for that. And that's what a strategic plan is meant to do is to put the interest of the county, the, the administration and the county board on the same plane so that we're all working towards the same goal and outcomes. Um, a lot of talk is coming out of the executive's office that, that talks strategic planning, but not enough engagement is coming out of the county board to, to, to make that effective for John. If we really want to support uh, the administration, we will want to create something like this. And again, I've, I've gone and done the research related to counties. There are counties all over the country. You went to you met with, with the administrator for LA County, Cheerwood. They have a huge strategic plan, you know, uh, so it's it's there. It's meant it's meant to give us our direction. And, you know, I'm a newbie, so I'm a newbie on the county board. I'm happy to be called that. Um, but I also have the ability of looking at it from the outside, looking in and knowing that if we were to do something like this, that it's going to get everyone working together. And that's what we want. I, you know, the last couple of meetings, county board has been very challenging because we're not all on the same page of where that, what that direction is. And that's that's kind of what a strategic plan is meant to do, is to do that. So, um, thanks. I don't know why this is something I should be considering. We're on the ARPA committee. And you're talking about the county strategic plan and direction, which is a good discussion, mm -hmm. but not why should I vote one way or the other on that, on that situation? Uh, I believe the intent was to ask for the ARPA money to, to fund this. Okay, that then that, that would be, yeah. it, it, says, it says on a general fund, so. Well, correct, because we have a designated, uh, Mike, do you want to explain? <laughs> well, to be consistent with the resolution, right. uh, resolution we just discussed, it has to be advanced from the general fund to get it started. Then we essentially replace it at a later time with the money that will end up in the special revenue fund that has the thirty billion dollars. That's the yeah. that that's the intention. And uh, Supervisor Fari, to, uh, to your point, the strategic plan is not connected to the thirty-three billion. Uh, it, is, it is simply an ask of the county, which I think that that I wanted to do from this ARPA commission to say that that we should look at one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. From the server money to start a strategic plan and a priority based budgeting tool, which uh, one of the ones we've looked at is Resource X um, out of Colorado. Uh, it's a tool that really lets you dive in and, and look at your programs and, and see what's mandated, see what the outcomes are. Um, if there's one thing I, I think that we do a bad job of, um, and no fault of our own, is measuring our outcomes in Winnebago County. Um, we, we look at things that, that look good on paper, but we don't actually. Uh, justify that the work that it's doing is working well. That was one of the reasons with the Route 10 discussion it was hard. Like, yeah, this is important, but we're spending a lot of money <laughs> to put one guy in a bus back and forth from Nina and Oshkosh. There's got to be a better way to do it cheaper. 
Um, and a tool like Resource X would be able to help us to measure those better and realize the programs that aren't working and we ought to change. So the question here and why it's in this commission is, will this commission propose to the board that $175,000 of our upper money should be spent to get a strategic plan going forward <laughs> and to get us a priority-based budgeting tool going forward for fiscal health, um, but not tie it to how we spend the $33 million, if that makes sense. Well, my response. Sure. Uh, first of all, I would support hiring a facilitator to help us with making the decision with these ARPA funds. But to your point, this is separate from him. Mm -hmm. uh, let me respond a little bit. I continue to hear comments from county supervisors about other counties. Uh, you need to do a little research. Uh, there are county boards established specifically east of Mississippi River that have supervisors. <coughs> Then you have counties that have commissioners. Generally, a county with commissioner is four, five, six people. That's it. That's all you have. That's why they have the plan. They need that as a tool to help run their county government. We do it differently here. That's why you have so many super because we represent our counties in a different focus. So if you quote LA County, uh, I don't think that's got anything to do with the way we do business here in one of April County. Totally separate scenario. So just to respond to sure. that issue. Just uh, just to clarify real quick, and, and I do want to to stay on this. This is staff asking for this. You know, and as a county executive, my full responsibility is operations. The board is policy and budget. You yeah, guys tell me. What, what the focus is and how much money the staff has to, to accomplish that goal. Mm -hmm. So the staff is looking really for a strategic plan. And, and I think it would really benefit the county and our stakeholders too, if, if we know exactly to find what our role is. Um, if you were to ask me, we've been doing some things that aren't necessarily county burden, right, lately. And it's been tying up some of our board members when, when we're, we're trying to get outside of what our role is as county government. Um, and a strategic plan would be very clear to everybody. This is what we're here for: highways and some of the services that we do, and 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 not some of the other things that are uh, not necessarily our role of this government. Can I ask a question? I, I keep on hearing this, and maybe it's just going through my mind wrong. You're saying this 175 thousand that you're asking for, you want to take it from the ARPA fund to get started, but you're not going to take it out of the ARPA fund. ARPA funds. We will, but we have to figure out where it's going to land before we can reappropriate it. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Well, an option would be we can spend this directly out of the fund we have, right? Call it our partial use of, of the lost revenue as funding general governmental services. But then you'll end up with not such an easy tally of where the 33 million went because some will have been spent one way and then after the other resolution. You know, and, and the money is transferred to a special revenue account. Eventually, most of the money will be there. We'll be spending it out of two different pots, and I think that would make it less transparent. So, frankly, I wrote the resolution this way in order to eventually have this money still be included in what gets transferred to a future special revenue fund, so that we can show the accounting very clearly of where that thirty-three million went, and this is part of it. But this one hundred and seventy-five. Is coming out of the 33 million someplace down the line it's going to be that's the intention yes thank you i didn't think yep. i was completely wrong no you were not mr chairman i i am all in favor of strategic planning i think it's a laudable goal for this county to have i don't have nearly enough information to know is it 175 is it 130 is it 25,000? um you, I think there were listed four or five other counties in Wisconsin who have this kind of program. One of the lead counties was Washington County. <clears throat> and I think Ethan used to work there. And I believe this is kind of something that came out of his bucket of things. I, I really, honestly, <laughs> I think you should look at it a little bit closer and not get into the 
changing the change safe with regard to budgeting a strategic plan with a group of people or a group of group with the software package we know nothing about other than somebody used it in, a, in another county have have this guy come in and give a demonstration of it. find out what it really does before you go and put 175,000 on the line <clears throat> and this shouldn't be the first spot we've got firefighters over here <clears throat> waiting for us to get into that I've got another project of Fox Crossing that I wished you would take a look at and I'm sure it wouldn't cost you 175 just to go but I think this shouldn't be the first project I disagree. That's why I brought it forward. Any other discussion on it? I'm going to try this. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> it should be a little while about this. If I have more questions. Um, my, I guess my my concern is I um, is is that being not enough. Do what you need to do. Um, and and I like the snicker so, uh, but um, but that's that's my concern is that is that 175 isn't, isn't enough for you and so why do you believe that's a number that you should start with? I I think it's a, a good number. I think we talked a lot with uh, Dale. I'm trying to remember last name at W O. Final final yeah. Talked a lot with Dale. You know, we talked a lot with with other. Uh, People that have gone through strategic planning, we thought this was a solid number for the first go. Uh, we've also had conversations with Resource X. I know we sat in a lengthy conversation with our new finance director, Vicki Fitzgerald, and she was pretty impressed with, with what they had to offer too. Uh, we talked to other counties that have gone through this and they've talked a lot of it. We also talked to uh, uh, Andrew Klein, who was the author of City in the Line. She was the finance director of Baltimore that pulled them back from uh some dark holes to some fiscal responsibility it was a lot of people look at as one of the grandfathers of outcome based uh budgeting um, which we kind of used a little bit of this year um, it worked well all of those believe that this number was was solid uh for us to get a decent strategic plan in and to to take a good look at the priority based budgeting tool and if we want to put this off i'm more than happy with that more than half of the presentations uh, brought in here to explain a little bit more. Yeah. Is there any reason you can't take it out of the ARPA funds and put it in your budget for next year? Well, that's the hope, but we have to have the the <coughs> the, the board to do that. We, well, and that would be the board. Yeah, that would come out of your pocket. Does anything to do with ARPA? Yep. The only reason uh, for this here now is because of, I I wanted to ask uh, use of ARPA funds to to get this process started. Um, I've, I've been trying for for a long time. Mr. Chairman, yeah. uh, I'd like to, for the consideration on Resolution 1-0-2022, to hold off for more information, not okay. postpone it, but hold off for more information. Uh, would you like the table to uh, oh, date certain? Postpone it. Postpone it. Okay, okay. postpone to a date certain? Well, if we know for sure what the next meeting what, what is. Our next, do you know what our next meeting is? We, we have to determine that, but sure. I, think it's, I think it's appropriate to postpone to the next meeting. That's right. Okay, that's good enough. Second. All right, we'll take a vote on that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that's nay. Nay. Oh, nay. nay. One nay. You know, I think I'm going to vote nay. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to. I really think we need to decide. We'll be the same. The same. Four, three. Mm -hmm. Five, three. One, two, three. Four, three. He's on three, four, three. He's on seven, four. Okay. Mary, it's not here yet. Okay. Oh, so what was the What are the three that go to? I voted. Yeah, I voted. Me. You check. Right, so there are eight voting members present. Three against. Three, five, three. 
All right. On the seven. All right. Discussion of potential county internal uses of ARPA funds and potential division of funds between county internal uses and community projects. Is this the list? This is a partial list. Yes. Um, yeah, and I want to add what's the first page. I don't have that. You don't have this? Passing on. I didn't quite understand all the acronyms, so maybe Correct. explain that. Yep. Yep. No, absolutely. Anyone else? No. I, I don't. That's your page one. Um, page one uh, starts with the uh, project and admin on top. And what's your page? Page two will have State Street North, North, North uh, toward the top on the line. Okay. NHS. Uh, just, uh, right. Right. What's our security camera? He does have it. I, I probably have it backwards. It's just the other side of the sheet. Oh, I don't get one. <clears throat> There's two sides. Okay. So I got it. So um just to, to start with this well uh oh, go ahead. if i might that where we began i believe at our last meeting you suggested that perhaps we should set percentages for the call and you're basing this i assume on school districts because that's your expertise correct uh actually i'm basing uh i'm basing it on what i've observed from municipalities Okay, and, and I don't know that that maybe isn't a bad idea, uh, because as I look through this list, uh, obviously nonprofits are really not considered here. Correct. So, but we maybe don't we need that percentage established initially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think? Well, I, I think that's part of the, the discussion, and that's uh, potential division of funds between county and general use and community projects. Okay. Um, and, okay. And I think community projects means just that. I mean, it, it depends on if you're going to partner with townships or municipalities, nonprofits, yeah. okay. whatever it is. Um, and, and this, I'm just going to go down this list in a brief overview real quick. Uh, number one on the list was, was a building study. Um, <coughs> our, our facilities director, Mike Elder, has been asking for a building study for 20 some years. Uh, he's never gotten one. Um, his concern is we really have no idea what the long-term costs are of our buildings, um, what our efficiencies are with the buildings, what it's costing us um, to be to be <laughs> separated. He, he has some concerns on there, and, and we'll get to that in a little bit later when I get to their deferred maintenance and what they know of. Um, the strategic plan, obviously, was something that's very important to me. I put that in there. Just an option called the debt. We have uh, $9 million of debt out there that would be debt levy. Not saying that that is something that uh, uh, we should do, um, but it, was, it would be a way to, to give people a little bit of, of extra money back in their pocket come tax time. Uh, veterans, it's a veterans housing village. Um, Jeff Ruppels has been talking a lot about a transitional housing piece that would go well with the veterans village up in uh, out of Gaming County. The Veterans Village in Allegheny County is more for people that are, are more stable and it's permanent long-term housing for veterans. Uh, what we don't have in the area is something that's more transitional piece for, for veterans out there that are struggling to come in and get some services to spend anywhere from three months to two years there. Um, this is something that he's been coordinating with a lot of their veteran groups on how we can make something like this happen in Winnebago County. Uh, it's very important. Um, they did find a CBRF um, it's available. It's really northern end of the county, which I think would be good because it's closest to Veterans Village. Um, and of course, uh, any veterans we have in Oshkosh can, can definitely uh, go to a facility in Nina Menasha if needed. Um, to the parks, 
Here are some uh, apps that Adam Brees, Director Brees, had brought forward uh, pay stations, uh, automatic pay stations, their boat launches, uh, walk on dam, which is going to have to be done uh, sooner rather than later, Grunman's boat launch, which we just appropriated, but we could backfill on that. Um, West Campus upgrades, $4 million is a big, that's phase two or three of the expo project um, to redo that parking lot and put in a, 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 a pond there um, to help with a lot of the drainage issues they have out there. Uh, the next is the expo uh, upgrade expo center. This came off a tabletop exercise that uh, Director Rasmussen from emergency management did with us. We had all department heads come in and we did an emergency exercise where a tornado had gone through Parkview and the CAD building. Um, and we found out that everybody's plan was to go to the Expo Center. Everybody's plan was to go to the Expo Center. And in the case of an emergency, that doesn't work out. So we spent the last year going over all our coop cog uh, processes to make sure that everybody is going to separate areas. So if there was a disaster, we were prepared. The one thing that we realized that we were not prepared for um, is that there is issues with the Expo Center. It is not uh, up to date or ready to be our reunification center. What we need it to be in Winnipeg County, in case there ever was an emergency, it's not ready for. Um, so this is some of the things that, that this was a project that multiple groups got together. So our IT department got together, emergency management got together, parks got together, um, and a little bit of uh, Parkview because the Expo Center is our emergency spot if Parkview ever goes down until we can relocate to the other facilities. Um, so these are this is a consideration of $853,000 we should really look at because um, it's a big vulnerability that we have. Uh, land conservation, as you know, uh, during the pandemic, a lot of people would drink water. Um, th these are some some costs that that uh, Chad Casper had, had brought forth that, that would really make a long impact. And again, a lot of these projects um, were only possible if we could stretch out that time frame to spend the ARPA money. So by right. 2026, we wouldn't be able to get these done. We wouldn't have the effect that we wanted. Um, so this is, it's a big ask for the 3 million, but I think it would have a greater benefit um, for quality of life and, and our water all around, around the county. If I may interrupt. Yep. Previous conversations before mm -hmm. the establishment of the commission, you had referred to legacy spending. Right. And of course, our committee put together this list actually. And all of these are really emphasis on that legacy. Mm -hmm. As you're going through the list, are we defining all of these requests as legacy issues? Most of them. Most of I them mean, are you're still term. sticking to that term. Correct. Right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Morris. I want you to tell me how, which ones are in here already, or which ones are cut, come off of here and going here. This is our executive capital improvement plan. And a lot of these things will probably go into the improvement plan at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about extending to 2026 and beyond, yes. We haven't filled the book up yet, and we do have a heck of a lot of, you know, this is a grocery list and a half of things to do, but we can't do them all in a year or all three years or all, you know, correct. And so yeah. I'm just getting ready to build mm -hmm. another book. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. That, that's that's the point. Yeah. Don't, don't you have a maintenance budget that covers most of this stuff, or you have you really have $32 million worth of deferred maintenance? No, we'll get to that. So <laughs> that is the next thing. That's the facilities long range deferred maintenance building needs. So this whole section um, was just facilities needs. And when I talked to other department heads, they they weren't aware some of these things were were on the list to, to do. So Mike Elder does do a good job of making sure that we replace carpet on a timeline so we don't have a whole bunch um, to do at once to make sure that we're maintaining our buildings and not always sitting uh, in the hole. So these are um, some of those costs, and we did break down totals per building. Um, as you see, airport, there's one and a half million of, of things we have to do. Upgrade tower for the FAA inspection uh, 2017 is something we're gonna have to do one way or the other. Um, down to uh, the cab building, we have another $645,000 of, of things to do here. Now, are all these 
uh, needed? No, but they are uh, long term fees. So I guess the exercise here, I'm going to go all the way down to page three, if you don't mind. Uh, the clerk board, Stuart has been asking for a county board, uh, a new board room for a long time. I think we need some updates with the technology that we have. Um, and goes back to where's the best location from that. And I think that's something going back to the building study that can help us define that. Is it the fifth floor of the courthouse? Is it here in this building? Is it out in the Cogman Center uh, where it's more central to, to the county? Um, these are things that, that we need to really think about. If we're going to make an investment, we should make an investment that makes sense long term. Um, to the sheriff, sheriff has uh, over two and a half million dollars or just under two and a half million dollars to, to replace the radians. Um, and that is for all our county employees. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead. Ask, does that also include uh, municipalities? No, nope. no, nope. which it did last time. But last time it did, yeah. 2011 it did. Right? So, if that were to be approved, would that mandate the municipalities get new radios? Municipalities would have, they have to buy their own radios. And but it would be mandated vote. in order to keep that communication no, working. No, they'll they'll work as long as they work. It's like so, the old ones would work with new radios. Yep. Yeah. And several, several of the municipalities have already replaced mm -hmm. Oshkosh, Pina. We have uh, a few. I talked to the, the fire chief out in Clayton, and they were actually purchasing some of the uh, older radios from other uh, municipalities. It's kind of great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's that's. Because I mean, it could be a, a Pandora box, is what I'm saying. Yeah. That's well, these are strictly county employee radios. Okay. So this is just from emergency management, sheriff's departments, utilities, highway shop, the yep. office corridor, health department. What's yep. wrong with the old radios? They are reaching end of life. They have a 10 year lifespan, and we bought them in 2011. The same time the municipalities got them. Correct. Right. We bought so them theirs is that end of life yep. also. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're all at the end of life. And they're all what, four to six thousand dollars a piece? Depends on which brand you are. Depends on which brand you are. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not like flat screen TVs that are going the other direction. But they last like 10 years or more. Right. It's a little different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so it's a sheriff. The uh, the airport has only the two vehicles on there. One is the rapid intervention vehicle, um, which we will have to do eventually here. That's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Then the striker fifteen hundred gallon fire truck, um, maybe not a requirement, but that's about a million. We really only need that vehicle for EAA every year. So we're looking into other options if we can work with other counties, or even a rent one would be cheaper than than this. But our 1500 gallon fire truck out there right now is, I believe, a 1983 model. So, oh gosh, gosh, then it's still kicking, but it, but it plus, works. Plus, they want 500000 to upgrade that building. Is $500,000 is the upgrade for the uh, the firehouse, um, which is a conversation that located we located at, at the airport. At the airport, okay. which is a conversation, a meeting that we're having with the city to really discuss what's the, what's the best way to go forward. Um, that's a partnership. Correct. That is a partnership. Yeah. Have these all been uh, somewhat prioritized by the individual department heads? So absolutely not. So that's these are this was this was Mike telling me this is what I have deferred maintenance, and this is this is what we have for, for projects coming up. Um just to kind of show that there are a lot of asks that aren't on here. Um, so a lot of these were one-time costs is what I want to focus on. Um, other than <coughs> the conservation is the only thing that really can be considered a program but more of a legacy program. Yeah. Health and human services do not have any real ask on this list other than the shelter care facility. Um, so other than are we going to address child care? Are we going to address uh, food insecurity? Are we going to address other things in the county? Aren't even on this list. Um, well, I think we need more clear direction as far as the county when we open it up. Um, I believe uh, Supervisor Eisen told people at JPS to send their requests to the county executive. And I heard they're going. Right. And I've been soliciting them. Um, 
solid waste gave me, I want to say another uh, $1.3 million for a new uh, um, transfer station, something like that. Um, yeah, no, all that. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and there, there are other requests that, that came in under after the deadline um, that aren't even on this list. So I think, I don't know if asking the county what what we what our priorities are to start is is really the the best for our needs for our fiscal health. I think the percentages and the breakdown of what we're going to look at is really the important discussion to have here. Um, I, I think the question of we you know I think we all assumed that once this opened up to the departments they would all flood with their Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got wants and needs, right? And those are criteria. Yeah. However, because we're dealing with COVID-19 and relief to this county, to the residents of one of Eagle County. Now, our focus is county service, obviously the departments. But I think we go back to this issue of presenting. Uh, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, if we were to approve this, there's nothing for a lot of good functioning nonprofit groups that really need additional funding. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'll go back to what you suggested, what I agree with. We need to really say, you know, 20, 30% of this 33 million plus, probably 35, needs to go to outside nonprofit groups or however you want to term them. Uh, and then the balance would look get into the county departments. But we go back to, I, I really emphasize because I really picked up on what you said about legacy. And, and I'm not sure a lot of this is legacy. I mean, uh, how does the uh, boiler replacement refer to a legacy issue. I mean, you're talking about something we're going to spend money on through a department that will be benefit people 10, 15, 20 years into the future. A boiler replacement does not accomplish that well, really. So well, if you don't have it, it's going to go. Right. Well, I, I understand that, but but I think because that was your focus, mm -hmm. maybe the burden falls on you to determine these requests from the department, what, what really are legacy issues? And that's what I'm requesting from the department. There's sure. a difference between legacy and what you can put into your capital improvement plan. Exactly, yes, and there you is. Need to, you need to separate those out. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, you, I, I think most of you know me, and you know that my hearts have been in nonprofits for a long time. And nonprofits have were continuing to grind it out through the entire pandemic. Boys and Girls Club did not shut down. Uh, Solutions Recovery Center did not shut down. The food pantry did not shut down. And I was in there in the trenches with them the entire time when we were out serving people, and I got all kinds of flack for being out in the community. Uh, it was actually enhanced because of COVID. Right, right. Um, so they they really they really did a lot of good work. Um, and I think the legacy part of it is we have to we we have to understand that these things coming up are all going to go on tax levy, you know, whether it be debt levy or whatever it is. And when I think of my mother was now on a fixed income, there is no amount of revenue that she could buy that makes the property tax go down. You know, and we have to be very cognizant of our fiscal health as a county. Because if we can't correct that, we're, we're never going to address housing. I mean, housing is another thing. You think of Habitat for Humanity. Um, we, we got a good chunk for them here in Oshkosh. We should probably get something for uh, the Habitat Fox Valley um, out of the Nina and Ash area, because that is a really big portion of all these things we're doing is we need, we need housing and we need that. That's an excellent slide. <laughs> it is yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. right. No, I know. So there are a lot of things that we have to look at, and and what are the ways that we can do to make sure the fiscal health of the county is good, so we can make sure those those property taxes stay low to encourage the types of investments for housing in Winnebago County that we're going to need. Um, so there are a lot of a lot of big ask, and and I do admit, um, my main focus was not 
this list over the last two weeks. It was that final uh, two weeks of, of budget and funding that up um, was really our, our main focus. Well, um, yeah, if your focus was sticker shock, this certainly will. It, it, it could have been bigger. There are a couple I took off and said that's completely ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so I made sure that they were only reasonable things that hit this list. What about your coroner's office? Why wasn't your coroner uh, silver? Why wasn't that? Yeah. Uh, because we allocated that for in in the budget too. There is there is a policy right now set up by the county board that we have to spend X amount of our general fund if it's over twenty percent, half of it, and that was in the allocation of the budget. So the reason it's on there. That would put that money back into the general fund, which I guess is, is good. Oh, we'd be back to where we started on that. I'm just saying things like that. To me, mm -hmm. it's, you're going to be taking taxpayers' money. You're talking about paper taxpayers. Right. Uh, that's going to be going against the levy and all that. Yep. So. And the other thing you don't see on this list is the 980 project. If, if I might interrupt again, I really think that based on what I'm hearing and the process we're making, I don't know if we're going to have any conclusions uh, when it's 90 degrees again. You know. Yep. So I, I, your focus on strategic planning, is there any reason why you didn't bring in just a higher facilitator, a professional to help guide us through this? We would, but- Well, not part of that. Yeah. yeah. Keep them separate. Just somebody to help this commission reach its conclusions. Well, what do you think of that idea? Or do you think we need to keep going back and forth here? No, I, I, six, eight months. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against that. I'm not against that. How much would it cost? I don't know. Are you doing it? What? And facilitate it? Well, I, I can do that, yes. But I, I mean, I haven't priced. I, I'm new to that world in regards to being a consultant and facilitating. So I don't have a price on that. Um, but there are people in our community that have offered such services already too mm -hmm. um, to do that, at least in the Oshkosh community. Um, we could reach out to the foundation would be willing to provide us a list of facilitators that do that as well. Any of the foundations in the Fox Valley would do that. I'm, I'm just... Are you asking for the strategic planner for this process alone? This process alone. <laughs> we, we can discuss it. Uh, in the future, I don't think it's a terrible idea, but I, but I guess we're, the discussion I'm trying to get is what does the county need right now um, is a longer process. I think that I have to have with my team to really figure out what's important. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the potential division of funds between county internal uses and community projects is what I really need today. I need to know what that limit is so I know what my priorities are based off of. Um, and right. I'd like to see where are we going to divide that percentage wise for community. Try to set up projects and get a perspective from project and the priority of the project down to the dollar amounts and what we can and what, what we can reasonably spend for those first projects. Say we look at 10, 10 projects, maybe all of us have in mind. And of those 10 projects, we have a general ballpark that is going to be spent. Take those one at a time, allow the, uh, allow the priority or the, the, the thought process to go beyond what, what, what kind of a priority you want to put on it. Uh, Say a, a mother's room or a, a, the fixing of a, an ice arena or something of that sort. You know what I'm saying? I, I do. So, John, what I think, what I think you're, what I think I hear you asking is that you're asking us to give you kind of a breakdown of percentage. Yeah. So yeah. that's, I think you're asking for that direct information. Yeah. I am. Um, yeah. And it's actually something I tried looking into to see what like the municipalities were doing in regard to that. And I think the, the kind of the number that I came up with was like 75% county needs, like operational, and then 25% um, 
community needs. And that roughly comes out to 30, 24, and nine or something, something around current. Around my math is a little off, but uh, but I mean between like 25 million to be you know put towards county operation or county needs. And then you know you could put roughly you know around nine million to community needs or county community needs. So, well, Tom, you had sent me an email too that had a, a pretty decent breakdown. Well, I was thinking the other way, the other way around. Uh, much of the money is going back into the community to capital projects, like up to seventy five percent. And and I just threw out a number, a clawback number for the county, because you've had more or less balanced budgets. My taxes haven't gone up, so I figure it's, it must be balanced somehow or another. So if you clawed back a certain number, uh, a smaller number than 25 million, sure. you know, unless you're cheating on deferred maintenance versus expenses versus mm -hmm. capital projects, um, that's, that's what you guys know. I don't know about that, but um, so, I'd like to see a large community impact because yeah. it's, it's taxpayers' money. It's meant to repair COVID impact. And if we put new, you know, boat landings, parks, bike trails, all that kind of stuff that the community would would enjoy, that makes more sense to me than you know, putting a roof on the uh, shop or something. So I'm just throwing out my opinion. Yeah, but isn't that really what he's talking about? That's a maintenance item. That maintenance item should be in the budget. Right. That's and right. and <clears throat> you should take the maintenance items out of there and now see where you're going. Uh, and and I just so I can get my two seconds in. I uh, we gave ten million away last month, and that went to certain entities. I hope that's taken into consideration when we start giving money away again. That it doesn't go to the same entities that got the ten million. Before. Right. Yep. So I I agree with that, and I also agree with the. Uh, the fact that, that some of these things are maintenance items, they should be put in a maintenance budget and done that way, you know, and not yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. but so, to, have, to have 10 people all come up with the same idea that this is what the number should be, yeah. not, that's not gonna, gonna be, happen. That's gonna be really hard. So okay, well, I maybe do you on so for yeah. just to be clear on staff for direction, uh you want to find out. What, what are the, the, the capital projects that really make an impact in the community, right. right? That's what we want to look at. We want to make sure that anything that's maintenance-wise, and we're making sure we're keeping that in the budget so we don't have a shock in 10 years, I guess is the question. Make sure that we're, we're balancing it out. Um, um, yeah, certainly, you could pay for maintenance out of, out of moving some opera money back into the county general mm -hmm. fund. I'm not opposed to it. I just... I'd like to make as much of a community impact as we can because we only get this one chance for the rest of our lives. So, and again, I, I stated <laughs> before that my concern is that the fire isn't out yet. That you know we we can still see some damage from this coming. Um, I just I totally I totally agree. Yeah, I have to agree with Bob over there. It should be community projects. Mm -hmm. Even one project. My favorite little one is I want the horse barn built out there. So it should be something that's been out for the whole, you know, we got, I'm just going to say we got firemen over there and they've got, they've already sent us a bunch that would take care of the whole, not Oscars or Armour or anything that takes care of the whole county. So them are the kind of things that we should be looking for. Something that's going to benefit all the taxpayers. Yes. So what document are you referring to? Is that the one I got? It's the one that I, I know I sent to everyone, I think. I uh, quite well. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, have, I didn't bring it down. <laughs> yeah. uh, radio right asked there, well, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. that's your first question. Yep. So, and I thought it was very well. Sure. Well, and, 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 and that's the challenge. I mean, when you, you green light department heads to, to give me their ass, they're, like I said, there are a lot of, there are a lot of requests that didn't make it on this list. Um, at all. Um, well, yeah. I went around to different people. I did give these away. Uh, I went and made copies of it. I asked the, many of the uh, part people to fill out a uh, justification on what you need and read through the, the information. So that you keep it within the framework of the requirements. 
And by doing so, that justification should come to your desk at some point in time, whether it's part two or whether it's that's up at the ice <laughs> you're seeing to be a reoccurring subject. Yeah, you made the point. Yeah, he's got a lot of work to do in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's one thing I finally, after 70 years, have decided I'm going to pay taxes. And I'm going to pay a lot of taxes. But the question I've asked myself is what do I get for those taxes? And I think part of what we can do here to help sell this whole project is. Make sure we tell the people what's happening. Like we just came through here and we said, okay, we're going to try to not do maintenance projects with it. That probably wouldn't be good, but let's try to do the stuff that benefits the majority. And what is that? And then get that out. Well, that's a, a great point. And, you know, the, the two things that are really missing on the list are health and human services, you know, which, which are partnering. And, and, one of, one of the things that shocked me when I got here is our director of human services hadn't met the executive director of United Way uh, yet. And he was never asked to, it wasn't a direction. Um, and I've given uh, Bill Topol, Dr. Topol, the direction to go out and meet these uh, executives. And he's met over 20 in the last year, personal one-on-one -on -one conversations. Just had a conversation with Bill Wyman for the first time. Sure. Uh, found out that they can actually partner with the Oshkosh Community Foundation on funds on projects. Uh, which is mind blowing, um, but that's the kind of collaboration that we have to do. The the ten point three uh, million dollars that we allocated last year, and I agree with you. Anybody who got that money already should be done. That was kind of a pressure relief because I knew there was a lot of a lot of people with a lot of questions coming, and if we could knock that off outside of our thirty three million, that was going to relieve a lot of the pressure. But those were all projects of people that were really doing good things in the community. Um, and that's what we have to, to lean on. To your point, if you're going to pay taxes, it should be make sure that you're getting something out of it. But we also have to remember that government isn't the only solution. We have to partner with their nonprofits, and that's where a lot of that rubber hits the road. So I agree with that. Um, so I think the direction clear, Mike, that we're any kind of maintenance things we're going to take off. Well, I think the I think the commission should vote frankly on, on direction just so I can it's only the third of the discussion. Well oh. yep. okay, you're right. All right. So but we've given him verbal guidance. I but we have we accept, is there a consensus on the 75-25 split or do we have a consensus? I think we have enough 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 direction and right. staff to get together and create a plan and, and, and bring it back. All right. Um the green light before was just a little bit too much with everybody. Uh just bringing their their wants and needs um to yeah, us i think it's yeah same. there was a lot more again emails that i have my 75 25 sounds very generous but it's good it's a good but with 75 community 25 county so right i think we're actually well, talking the same thing but you got to flip yeah yeah i thought well, i heard you say 75 percent i Yes, but when Tom described what he was doing, he was talking about county-driven projects that benefit the community, right. where I'm in line with that at 75%, as long as it relates directly to the county's operation. But I was, I mean, I was suggesting that 25% of the 34 be offered to community county community like nonprofits or if we're going to talk with our municipal partners mm -hmm. or our county partners and, and such like that you um, that i was no no, <laughs> no so, i don't think there are yeah. i i have a tendency to agree with that we can debate those numbers it could be 20 75 25 uh but that's where they want to know but I look at the, the land and, and water ask, right? That, that is the definition of the things we should be looking at. You know, here's a program that's going to make our water cleaner for 50, 100 years down the, down oh, the road. It's, it's big time. You know, if we can get farmers to, to really pick up on, on uh, no-till farming and some of these other buffer crops and the other things that do, they have a long-term impact. Now, again, the concern is we're creating a program, but we're, but with lost revenue, <coughs> We can fund that program long term, not just till 2026, and then good luck. We that had the was important to us. That yeah. was very important. Chad said if it wasn't for the 2026 you thing, none of that would probably be done. Years. Right. And and I think if we affect the water quality of Winnebago County long term, 
that is a legacy project. That's something we can look back when this is all done and be happy that, that we got behind. And I think when you're saying those community long-term legacy effect things are what we should focus and, on. And see, and I would say that's part of the 75% number related to what the county should do. Right. You know, mm -hmm. can I have a huge that? community impact. Uh, Mike, could you come back to the next meeting with the numbers representing 75 and 25? And I would also ask 80, 20. You, you don't you don't have to take that long to get some math. Out of okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Eight, 25 percent is eight million three hundred forty seven seven hundred thirty dollars. Seventy five percent is twenty five million forty three thousand one eight nine. And what's 20? A little it's less. not hard to write those numbers up <laughs> yeah. on a whiteboard or something. <laughs> you don't have six million six seventy eight number. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we may be picking out have already been addressed in things like the Drummond boat landing and the amount of money that has been spent in that direction. And maybe we should be looking. Uh, not to ignore the parks and recreation department, but to pick up for say park view and do something to you know, create a a little bit of help there. Ice arena or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's just well, a we just do that in horse barns. Horse barns. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm just asking for. Uh, a little fluctuation uh, in yep. percentages so a committee could well we're not we're not making a final decision no. yeah but but we'll bring back a list then 25 percent would be uh what did they say eight million three forty seven seven thirty so right. we'll and bring I'll back a list that's in that neighborhood at least. and I'll include his flip side is it 25 percent uh county 75 percent outside <laughs> of the county yeah. well, my point was the 20 the smaller numbers should come out of this this use of funds yeah, and the so other number should be invested right. in the so, community. And there, there's certainly overlap. Yeah, and, and I can't disagree with that, but that, that wasn't what I was suggesting. Right. And that's and that's the point that you're making. Um, you know, you know me enough that I would thoroughly enjoy that. I was playing uh, more so on the path that I thought would be acceptable by the committee. So if the committee wants to flip those around, I'm fully in support of that. I think responsibility, you know, and not worrying so much about how hard the numbers are. <laughs> Sure. But by giving yourself a little flexibility as you get folks at the end, because in some cases you're going to go over. No, it's a, What's a guideline, point. right? It's, yeah, I think we're just looking at for administration yeah. for the request, some kind of guideline. Yep. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I'm a lot clearer about the direction we can go now. I just have a question, uh, and I think I know who it is, but when you say staff, who's all the staff that decides this? We, no, we, we, we get together, uh, everybody. Right? They have staff. We, I have one on one department head meetings. We have full department head meetings, everybody together. We do a small cohort, so we get together and land use, and we really rely on the team. We have a conversation, everybody talks to each other, and we come to decisions as a group. So staff means everybody. Yeah. And you have the they all yep. they all made the decision. So one other one other question, just because it's it's what I've observed in uh, municipalities is that when we were when they were trying to solicit ideas mm -hmm. for people to do that, they had like an actual form that they used that provided some guidance as to what types of things to bring forward. So that way you're not necessarily getting inundated with a hundred and thousand different emails. Yep. There's a hundred, maybe a hundred thousand emails that have some very solid direction as to what they're looking for. I think that'll be an item to discuss at our next meeting. Yeah. Um, is how, 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 how we're how gonna do that. Yeah. One of the things that you know I talked about as a county, we had a lot of community Communities that did do lesson, yeah. lesson sessions already and do use yeah, those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. and, and what that process is going to be, I think we should set that. Sure. Because uh, there's a lot of board members that aren't on this commission that have projects they want to report mm -hmm. to. Um, now, I held back on mine. I'm not so yep. big on the ice rink now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fire department. Ice in three months. Yep. Can we 
we identify fire departments and parks as a nonprofit? Would that be correct? I, 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 I guess I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't necessarily refer to it as a nonprofit. I would refer to it like as a community resource or something. Stakeholder like, partner. Yeah, stakeholder partner within you know county. I kind of hope we need to do the wording so they fall into that group. Yeah. Right. I, I think the direction that we want to give John, if there, if you guys in between between now and the next meeting, mm -hmm. is try to define what those stakeholder groups would be that we want to support. Uh all right. I, I think of is there any other discussion on, on direction for that that you want to give us? I think I'm pretty clear. Other than that question, Mike, are you gonna be able to get this done? My schedule should be freeing up a little bit. Yeah, the, okay. the hard part of the budget is done. Now it's not the committees and amendments. Uh speaking of which, I'd like to set the next meeting date. That's your next number. Um now we have historically been doing this the uh, third or third. Well, third? I mean, we did one the second Tuesday and on the third, I heard fourth now. So, so I, we I did, actually like the later of the month better. Well, except for next month, uh, we are in the budget uh, for oh, the 31st. Yeah, so it would have to be either the 25th or going into November. 25th, I I like. I think it works well for me. It's not work for anybody here. The budget's going to be done. The 25th? That's it. Is the budget's done. Uh, well, I well, got, we'll do the budget if we can. I got a major conflict on the 25th. You do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, are there any other you want to go back to days? the second Tuesday? Or is that not enough time, Mike? Well, we have to go into November. How about the 27th? Anybody open on that one? 27th of November? October, October. Uh, Thursday, or is that budget? It's not budget, but it's getting close to it. It's getting close, getting close. close to it. Yeah, the workload may uh, accelerate. Must be your I'm looking at Thursdays here. Uh, no, that's uh, far from yeah, okay. that's right after that's the third Thursday. Uh -huh. yeah. 19th is a Wednesday. I'm looking at the third week of October. See, I'm, I'm concerned now that there will be enough time to really do justice to what we have so to do. Yeah, we got a lot of work to do. Okay. Well, you want to be able to leave with all the cohorts at least. Go, go to go to the 28th and go to you know, the 31st is Halloween. You don't want to do that. 31st is the budget meeting, the county budget meeting. Yeah. We've got some oh, such, uh, you want one for every month. Yeah, I'll be I'll be wearing your yeah, costumes. Until you until you really get 18th did not work for people, right? The 18th was the 18th was too close. 18th was too close. The 18th is the top board. 17th. Yeah, yeah. Seventeenth is open. For me. For you. What's that? Mike, we staff wise, how much time do we need here? Are we looking the twenty fifth or the twenty fourth and twenty eighth? Is that is that our window? Well, that's what I was thinking should be the earliest. To be honest, okay, if we're looking at presenting a solid list and getting input from other staff and department heads. I some discussion. When's the county budget start? Thirty first. Thirty first. Thirty first. Why don't you make it the twenty seventh? Who did the 25th not work for? 25th didn't work for somebody. 26th works for me. 25th was bad for Chuck. 25th is bad. 27th was bad for Morris. How about the 26th? 26. 27th. Wednesday the 26th? Well, it's a count. 26th, Wednesday the 26th. Wednesday the 26th works for me. Good. Oh, 26th. As far as I know right now, but not here, well, you guys can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, John. Right. Two o'clock. Three o'clock. Yeah. Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Well, we've been doing three. Yeah. Three. Okay. okay. I'm going to put really it in my trusty phone. Yeah. We need yeah. more talk. Two does sound good. Well, it's important. Yeah. It gets dark yeah. early. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. It's the last two o'clock works for me. Does two o'clock work for everybody? It works for me, too. I don't have time. Well, yeah, I can make it. You can make it work. Right. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. All right. I did something. Did you bring some money to the dream already, Tom, or not? Yeah. Well, it's good. Yeah. You know how that is. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.